Hi, this is Sam and welcome to Winglogic. If you're watching this listening and vocabulary video from a country where it's cold right now, like here in the UK, brace yourself to potentially be green with envy or to seethe with envy, as today I'm going to talk about my recent trip to very sunny Gran Canaria for my friend's stag party or stag do. First, we'll see what a stag party is. We'll analyse a couple of words related to this topic and then I'll show you a little bit of Gran Canaria. So what is a stag party? Gran Canaria's survival hinges on tourism and although it's always teeming with Brits, it welcomes people from all around the world who speak all sorts of languages and that's exactly what inspired me to make this video in the first place. When I met non-native speakers of English and told them I was there on a stag party, most of them did not understand what I was saying. They looked like deer in the headlights, and once I've explained the word stag, you'll understand that this is a pun. The reason for that is that foreigners are much more exposed to American English, where stag party translates into bachelor party, and when I said that, everyone understood. And what Americans call bachelorette party, we call hen party. When two people are engaged to be married, they have one final party before tying the knot, and these tend to be two separate events. So the groom will have a stag party with all his male friends, and the bride will have a hen party with all her female friends. All sorts of things can happen at these parties, depending on what the stag and hen want, but also on what their friends organise for them, as it's traditionally their responsibility to arrange everything. What you see in films is that strippers and all sorts of debauchery are thrown into the mix, but it doesn't have to be like that if that's not a cup of tea. You can usually spot these parties very easily because the groom will be wearing a sash saying groom-to-be, referring to the fact that he will be a groom on his wedding day right before he gets married and becomes a husband, and the bride will be wearing one saying bride-to-be. At least in the UK, stag parties are on the rise now, which are a combined stag and hen party together, meaning that the man and the woman celebrate together rather than separately. And obviously all of this also applies to LGBTQ plus couples, where two gay guys may have a stag party each or a joint one, and two lesbians would have two hen parties or a combined one. Speaking of bachelors and bachelorettes, you may be familiar with the American dating reality show The Bachelor, where a group of women compete and fight so that one of them can become the girlfriend of this one man. Now, I've never watched it and I don't plan to, but whether you watch it or like it or not, I highly recommend you watch the TV series Unreal. It's a fictional series that explores the catastrophic drama that goes on behind the scenes of a show that draws inspiration from The Bachelor. It's not an easy watch because it really is dramatic and emotionally draining, but I thoroughly enjoyed it and I do think you should give it a go. Girls, I don't know why we associate your party with hens, which are chickens, and I don't know why we call the men's counterpart a stag party, but what is a stag? A stag is a fully grown male deer, a big bambi, and careful because its plural is invariable. We have one deer and two deer. We don't say two deers. And now you know why I said that the expression that I used earlier was a pun when I said that people look at me like deer in the headlights. A bachelor is a man who's never been married, and if you say that Tom is the town's most eligible bachelor, that means that he's the most desirable bachelor because of his wealth, looks, and social standing. It's also a first university degree, and careful because we say a bachelor of arts or science, but we say a bachelor's degree, and I have a whole video on why we say a bachelor's degree and a master's degree over here. Earlier I said that a stag party can also be called a stag do, and that's because do means party. I'm going to John's leaving do tonight, means that John is either leaving the company or the country, and this is his last leaving party before he goes, or you can also say leaving drinks. 
I don't know if you remember that a few years ago, M. Watson got a buzz cut. She cut her hair very short and that sent the world into a frenzy because everyone was talking about M. Watson's new do. And that's because do or hairdo is an informal way to say hairstyle. And I have a whole video on hair, hairstyles and idioms with the word hair over here. Earlier I mentioned the word sash, which is this, and as a potentially irrelevant fun fact, a sash window is a window that has two frames that you open by sliding one either up or down. A groom or bridegroom is an engaged man before he gets married on his wedding day, before he becomes a husband, and it's also someone whose job is to feed, look after and clean horses. As a verb, it means to clean and brush animals, especially horses, and if an animal grooms itself, it cleans its own fur. To groom also means to take care of your appearance by keeping your hair, body and clothes clean and tidy. You can buy male grooming kits that contain all sorts of razors and tools so that a man can shave and look sharp and shipshape. She loves grooming her hair. His beard is always perfectly groomed. That means that he looks after it. He doesn't let it grow unkempt. And well-groomed men can spend more time in the bathroom than women. Claire has been grooming her daughter to take over the family business means that she's been preparing and training her daughter for an important job or position. You can also groom someone for something, so Tom is being groomed for his next role in the company. On a more negative note, grooming someone also means striking up a friendship with a child or minor with a view to then starting a sexual relationship with them. Gran Canaria is an island that belongs to the archipelago of the Canary Islands, very close to North Africa. It belongs to Spain and Spanish is its official language. I went there in November and it was 27 degrees, basically full-blown summer. Gran Canaria is extremely popular among Brits who migrate there in the winter to get away from the cold. As I said, I went there on a stag party and went as a gay group and stayed in Mas Palomas, which is where all the gays are. It's basically a gay colony. It was my first time, but most gays from the UK go at least two, three times a year. Mas Palomas is famous for its pride celebrations. They have a summer pride and a winter pride, which is why and when we went. There was a pride parade and all sorts of pride events, and this area is famous for its sand dunes. One part of the beach boasts these huge sand dunes, which I'd never seen before, and apparently, since the wind is so strong, they basically move, because the wind blows off the sand and moves it, so a dune that is here will not be here in an hour, because it will have moved somewhere else. I did not see this event with my own eyes, but that's what people say. And that's it for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel down below. And do let me know in the comments if you have any questions and also any stag or hen party traditions that you have in your country. In the meantime, I will see you on Tuesday with another explanation video.